I realize I haven't been up in this space as much as I'd like to, and that's because, as you know, because we've been blasting it out like almost nonstop. We have a retreat coming up in two weeks. Is today Friday? I want to say it's Friday. So we have a retreat coming up in two weeks, and uh, it's going to be really fantastic, but there's just been a lot of preparation going on on my part. I have to tell you a funny story. I told this story to a couple of friends last night, but um, I was talking to Jeremy, my husband, on the phone last night. We were just going over just this, you know, pile of details that we have to make sure we attend to in order to have the bliss retreat just go off without a hitch, of course. And so there's a lot of prep going into it. And at some point I told my husband, who, if you go to the retreat, you're going to meet. And I just have to tell you, he's nothing like me. <laughs> he's just um, not woo woo, uh, but such a, well, such a good hugger as those of you who went to the retreat last year, you know, he's such a good hugger, but he's just like this lumberjack kind of guy. And he's growing a beard out. Um, and he's he's probably, well, it's not probably, he's six years younger than me. I don't like to admit that, but he's six years younger than me, but he's growing this beard out, and it's all like Sean Connery gray or silver. And so I told him that he really just, on top of everything else that he needed to do to get ready for this retreat, I really needed him to, like, trim it up. Like, trim the beard a little bit, babe. It's, you look like an old coot. And he said, well, damn, maybe I just won't go to the bliss retreat. And I said, oh, Yeah. Maybe I just won't go to the bliss retreat. And he said, well, I have an idea. Maybe we'll just send in a clown. <laughs> I don't know. It just it struck me. It's so funny. I thought, what can, can you even imagine on the nights? Because at night times, I'm going to be running the services and the meetings, and we're going to be doing channeling, and it's going to be so fantastic. And I've already been, uh, oh, so much great energy. But I just had this night, this vision of, like, 50 people sitting in the room just waiting for Crystal and Compton, and instead here comes the clown. <laughs> hey, kids, anybody want an Archangel balloon? I just, it struck me as so funny. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you because we've been talking a lot about <laughs> the retreat and how great it is, and I just thought, well, wouldn't that be a hoot? Now, I might have to get a clown. <laughs> Don't worry, there's not going to be Blissy the Clown at the Bliss Retreat. It's going to be Crystal Ann Compton. We've got so much in store. And if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, hello. <laughs> Go to thelightworkerslab.com slash retreat. Somebody put that in the comments. I would greatly appreciate it. Thelightworkerslab.com re slash retreat. Um, I think we're up to about 50 people. I think we've well we've blown past our minimum. We're about to hit our maximum, but I keep talking to the retreat and, and I don't think there's anybody else there that weekend. So if we need more spaces, they might be able to open it up. But everybody's welcome from the Lightworkers Lab or in the sound of my voice, as long as you are ready to get into dynamic alignment with spirit and bliss out and be with a bunch of people from all around the world who have that same intention, well, heck, you are welcome. So please do come if you can. So anyway, it's been a while is what I was saying since I've gotten up and just talked to the community. What I wanted to do today is just do some fun little oracle card reading games where everybody can kind of try and connect to an oracle card and see what message is for them. But I'm going to start, before even doing that, I'm going to start with a card that I pulled for the whole community. I just thought about us, <clears throat> I thought about what we're going through, I thought about some of the posts that I've been seeing in the feed, and I just, you know, with an, a heart and an intention for the space and for the people, I pulled a card, and the card that I pulled out of my still favorite deck, which is BT Dubs, Sacred Symbols for Divination and Meditation. I don't know if this is in print anymore, but, you know, I just always want to give a shout out because I really like this deck. The card that I actually pulled out for the community is Burden Basket. Burden Basket. And this is an interesting card because the idea of the Burden Basket is essentially to stop fixating and focusing so much on the things that are going wrong in your life and stop putting your energy and pointing your interest at the things that aren't working and instead take the energy of those things and place them in a proverbial burden basket. And, and this is actually a Native, a Native American symbol 
and you can you can meditate on the symbol or meditate on this idea of a basket or some kind of a divine receptacle where you can place your burdens down and create space within yourself for new energy as i often say if we want a new life if we want a new result if we want a new expansion well we've got to create space in the life for that and we do that by doing our inner work by pursuing various things like study and fellowship and meditation, but we also have to really create the space in our thoughts and in our feelings for spirit to come in and occupy. And one of a great, I think this is just a great tool. And, and actually, honestly, people, I need this for myself. I mean, I'm not just busy. I've got a lot of things going on in my life, some of which on the surface seem to be worrying, you know? We're actually going to be talking about that at the retreat, and Spirit's got some really cool stuff to say about that. But I, I need this as well, and I really need to just check, chiggity check myself before I wreck myself. I really need to check in periodically throughout my day, like more than once, because when you get really busy or really stressed out, you have to take the time to just stop hammer time. Do a scan of what you're thinking, what you're feeling in your body. And if you are worrying or if you're running those inner narratives, if you are looping incessantly around the negative or the lower vibration, you've got to stop and you've got to remove that. Put it into the burden basket, my friends, and let this divine receptacle hold it for you. Don't you know spirit has a wingspan that can cover all of your burdens and hold all of your burdens? You have everything that you need. So lay that burden down, at least in the mind and the energy, so spirit can come in and give us that blessing. Okay, that's our message for this community for this week. Mahalo, Keaku. I love it. I need it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to chickity check myself before I wreck myself. Now, on to the festivities, shall we? Yes, we shall. I have three cards before me. And I'm going to show you each card one at a time. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to energetically connect to these cards. I want you to observe yourself and your various responses to these cards as I hold them up. Because each of these cards carries with it a specific message. Now, if you feel anything like a magnetic tug or a pull. When you see a card, notice that. If you see an image flash before your mind's eye, like the number one, two, or three, pay attention to that. If you just know suddenly, oh, it's card number three, that's my card, pay attention to that. Don't talk yourself out of what you're picking up because that's the bane of the spiritual person is talking themselves out of all of the messages that spirit is trying to give for them. So make sure that you're paying attention to the card that really, really resonates or vibes with you the most because that's the card that you need to receive from. It's got a message for you. Now, before I show you these cards, I just want you to take like a beat, a little wink, and think about something in your life right now for which you have a question or you have an intention. Think about something you'd like to illuminate for yourself or shed some light on, which is to illuminate. Think about something you'd like to shift or to transmute. Just have that secret intention in your heart. Now, before I show you these cards so that we can ask spirit to answer that question for you or to give you some information specific to that secret intention. Do you have it? Do you have the question? Do you have the thing you'd like to shift in your mind? Hearts, 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 if that's you. Are you ready to proceed? All right, let's go. Now, as I, as I show you these cards, I'm on Facebook now. I'm going to probably also put this up on YouTube. It doesn't matter. As I show you these cards, if you feel something, see something, hear something, know something, these are Claire's, by the way, I want you to just comment. I felt card number one. I felt card number three. Before I reveal it, the reason I ask you to do this is because this is a validating action step. It's a trusting exercise where you say, I felt card number one before I even saw it. 
So when you see card number one, you don't talk yourself out of it. Or when you see card number two, I'm like, oh, I like that a little bit better for myself. I think I meant number two. No, I want you to claim what you feel as soon as you feel it or claim what you know as soon as you know it. Put it in the comment section. And then when I reveal it, when I actually give you the message for the card that you resonate with the most, comment again and let me know if it makes sense for whatever your secret intention or question is. Okay? All right. Sip of coffee. You know a sister needs her coffee. Hmm. And onward and upward we go. First card. Card number one. Card number one. Do you feel anything? Sense anything? Pay attention to what's coming through. Don't discount it. Card number one. All right. Card number two. Card number two. Does this feel different in some way? Does it have a stronger pull? Maybe an energetic heft to it or a resonance. Card number two. All right. Last but not least. Card number three. Card number three. How does this one feel? Do you notice the difference in how that feels? Does it feel neutral? Does it feel weaker? Does it feel stronger? Is your body giving you a yes? Pay attention to that and don't discount it. Card number three. All right. Now, as I show you these one last time, I'd like you to comment what card you resonated and vibed with. Okay? Trust yourself. Often, remember, the first answer you got is usually the right answer. So stay with the first question. Stay with the first answer, rather, that you got. Okay? Card number one. Card number two, yes. Last but never least, card number three. Card number three. Now, I haven't looked in the feed, but I've been noticing on YouTube that it's curious when I do these. I've been trying to do them in a weekly post, but a lot of people end up getting the same card or there's a majority of people with the same card it's just interesting how the energies are moving through us we are all one you know we're all connected and whether we know this or not whether we're caught up in the maya of it all or the illusion of, of it all we are all in a symbiotic way experience this experiencing this life together so it's so interesting to me that a lot of us kind of have the same responses all right card number one without going on too long is Admit the truth to yourself, my friend, and act accordingly. The prayer associated with this card is, I appreciate your support in helping me face my feelings with grace and acceptance so that I can be lovingly honest with myself and with others. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for giving me courage and giving me strength. Admit the truth to yourself and act accordingly. Companion message would be, sometimes we hide who we are. We hide who we are in relationships. We hide who we are in our jobs. We hide who we are in our purpose. We hide from our purpose. We don't occupy organically and authentically the beautiful divine being that we are. Also, sometimes we hide from truths that we have to face, that God and the universe is calling us to face so that we can break through those fears and reach the next level in our lives. But if we don't face them, if we don't admit the truth to ourselves about something and act accordingly, we, ne we never make that breakthrough and we never hit that next level. So 
that's the message, the strong and powerful message for card number one. And I hope that helped a lot of you out there. Card number two, are you ready? Okay, good. New beginnings and a fresh start. The prayer associated with this is, thank you for bringing new opportunities and offering support and for helping me release and to heal my past. Fill me with trust as I experience these life changes. New beginnings and a fresh start. I would probably associate this with the Ace of Wands, Ace of Pentacles, uh, with new projects, new relationships. If you're considering releasing something in your life right now in order to go in a new direction, this card is telling you that fresh beginnings are possible. And it's, it's just like the idea of sloughing off what no longer serves us, the old snake skin, if you will, in order to become the new creation. We have to be willing to release. We were just talking about how powerful it is to clear that space for spirit to bring in the new thing, the new beginning, and the fresh start. Awesome message. Finally, for those of you who picked card number three, your message is go forward fearlessly. Go forward fearlessly. The prayer associated with this is thank you for walking with me every step of the way. And spirit does do that. For holding my hand, giving me confidence and also courage, and guiding my thoughts and my actions in the direction of love and my true life's purpose. Do you want to know? the biggest sign that you're a light worker it's that you feel something powerful within you there's almost like a sense of urgency within you that you have to start you have to go forward fearlessly you must begin because you came here to do something powerful i've taught this in some of my classes and i will repeat this the universe often builds in fears that connect and correlate to our life purpose. For example, I'm a motivational speaker and I'm an inspirer, I'm a teacher, but for years I had a profound and truly debilitating fear of public speaking. Until I finally faced my fears and proceeded forward fearlessly, I was scared. Those boots were knocking and not, not that way. My, my knees were knocking, my, my boots were knocking, and my knees were knocking. I was scared. I did it anyway. And it was only when I faced those fears and went forward that I broke through to the next level. All of these are so positive, these, these messages. Again, the first one being admit the truth to yourself and act accordingly. The truth shall set you free. The second, again, is it's time for a new beginning and a new start. And don't forget, you have everything you need right now. All of the resources are there for you. Last but not least, what you scared about. There's nothing to be afraid of. Go forward and occupy your divine nature, your divine purpose, your divine life, your best life, and do so fearlessly. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yes. And do you want that? If you want that, say yes. Powerful to say yes. To spirit because when we say yes and show up with a yes well don't you know spirit is right there saying okay you said yes here we go it's time to move it's time to manifest it's time to flow and that's exactly what spirit does those are the messages for you I'd love to see in the comment section if that resonates and how that resonates and if there's a particular situation if you want to share you don't have to um, that it might illuminate for you. And also, don't you forget the burden basket, laying those burdens down. We came to the earth school, my friend, to experience this heightened level of learning, much of which is through challenge, but we did that for a reason. Our goal is to pivot away from the energy of the challenge and the pain and the suffering and pivot toward that which we know is true. And what do we know that's true? 
I know. Well, there is a God. I know that. I know I was created by that God in love and perfection. I know that God is love. And I know that when I was created, I was created as a reflection of that love. That's my oversoul. That's my I am. And then my I am sent me, Crystal Ann Compton, into this weird world, 3D reality, in order to have this very challenging at times experience. But I'm not going to focus on the challenge. I'm just going to be like Neo. No. I'm going to be navigating, okay? And I'm going to be living in this life, always aligning back to the divine, always aligning back to the light. That is what we are called to do. So lay those burdens down and focus on that light. On that note, I love each and every one of you. And I'll try to get back into this space a little bit more often, especially after the retreat. And how much would I love to see you at the retreat? Again, the lightworkerslab.com slash retreat. It's going to be powerful. Lives are going to be shifting. It's going to be fantastic. And I would love to see you there. Bye, guys. <laughs>